Reference sets in Curator are very easy to visualize. So you just go into the GUI, into the admin tab, into the GUI, and you can see what table it is. There are alphanumeric, ignore case, or, or weak case. This one, for example, does not ignore the case. And we can uh, click on it, and all we have is a bunch of URLs, right? So again, easy to visualize, easy to deal with, but there is a very powerful one uh, that is not reference, it's called a reference map. It's, it's a, something that has a key and an entry, something that resembles this type of a structure. And we're, this is the example that we're actually going to use, that, you know, this is the key, 0xc, and all these 0, 064, 68, 232, etc. And then a text. Okay. We're going to use this as an example. If we go here into the log activity, I have some Windows events. And notice that here we have that sub status for that event ID. Uh, and that's what the table is, uh, is all about. So if we go back to the list of all the other events, let's click on on the first one here. What is the sub status? It's also 6A. Let me go, I believe that that's the one I had before. Let me go into the second one. You have a, a different sub status. Okay, well, looks like all we have is uh, 6As in here. Let me go back here on the button. But the idea is uh, I want to create a table that will tell me the translation of that substatus for the multiple uh, different occurrences. Uh, actually, I have a different one here, uh, the 64. So the idea is to create a table that will give us the translation, and we're going to use that in another example. Uh, we're going to build that reference map in Curator. How do we do that? So we're going to use the API. So we go here to Interactive API for Developers. And we're going to create it manually. And then I'm going to describe what you need to do if you want to do this programmatically. Let's say that you want to do this with a Python script or, or something. So. We span the latest version of it is on their reference data. And the first things that we need to go is here on the reference map. And we need to first create the table. To create it, to get you retrieve information, to create one, you need to do a post. And what you need to do is to specify the name and also what type of uh, table is this. So it's going to be uh, alphanumeric, ALN, ignore case. So let's put that in here. So these are the two required parameters. And when we click try it out, we get the table created for us. OK. Now, should you want to do this programmatically? Well, here is the exact, exact stream that you will need to actually do. So this is the error code map example. If you want to make this part of a variable, but you replace this on your Python or whatever uh, language you're using for the variable that you want. So now we have the table created. Now let's actually populate the table again manually. So we go here. We scroll down on their name and we also are going to be doing a post because we are putting data into it. So what we need to do is first put the name of the actual table in here, this arrow code map example, and we're going to be putting a key and the value for the key. So the key is going to be this one. And I'm going to format it a little differently because if you see it in the actual code, it is it looks something like 0x and then the actual 
number. So again here on the event, that's the format that we have. So and that's what we are actually typing. And here in the value, we're going to put the actual text that corresponds to that. So we click try it out and we got the first entry populated. And you have the, you know, the actual uh, programmatic way of actually doing doing as well. I'm going to pause the video, I'm going to populate the table with all the other values and I'm going to be right back. So I finished populating the table manually. Again, you'll do this programmatically. And if you go back here, now we were doing post to put data in it. If we do a get and we put the name of the actual table, and we do try out, we get a 200 and we see, you know, the entries with the actual values in it. So, how will you access that from uh, QReader instead of the API directly? Well, here I'm in the Log Activity tab under Advanced Search and I'm doing a select and then Reference Map. I'm putting the name of the table that you saw me filling and I'm putting a key. Okay, and that you see as it gives me that key. If I change this and put uh, 6D, I believe that was another uh, of those entries, we should get the other. Well, doesn't have an entry for 6D. I may have done something wrong. Let me try another one. Actually, there was not a 6D on the table. Okay, there's a 6F, and when I put 6F, you see the other entry. So this is a way of, you know, I hope you have learned how to create using the API uh, reference map, how you look at it from the API tool, it's very useful. You can from, from it extract how you will take the syntax for you to do it programmatically and how you use it from AQL on advanced searches. In the next video, we're going to show you how we use these with AQL properties.